everyone. Hope you've been enjoying your weekend. If you're tuning in on Sunday, the day that this show comes out, appreciate you. Thank you for your support. As always, of course, this is the Cabral host call edition of the Cabral concept where we answer our community's questions. Basically me coming into your home. Uh, you have a question for me. I am without any of my textbooks, without any research, without pulling any data. It's me drawing upon 25 years of experience, uh, overseeing an amazing team. Over the years, I've, I've had many, many people on my team and just basically drawing on that data, that experience. So what I want to do is I want to share with you what I feel is a um, hopefully trustworthy second opinion as to where to go deeper, what you might be missing. And so I love being able to answer these questions for you. Of course, I have to share with you that this is not medical advice, shouldn't be mis. Uh, misconstrued in any way as medical advice, medical cure, medical diagnosis, or medical treatment plan. But for sure, we're going to be helping you get deeper as to what the underlying root causes as to why you're not feeling well, why you're not able to gain the weight, why you can't lose the weight, or why you feel like you're aging at a much more rapid pace. So without further ado, let's get into today's questions. First one is from Zoe. Zoe says, hello, I'm a newly graduated pharmacist with a passion for lifestyle medicine. I'm also a nutrition coach for friends, family, and members of my church. I have several patients that ask for help with IBD symptoms. I was hoping you could do a review of which digestive enzymes are used to help patients experience di experiencing diarrhea versus constipation. Are these similar any Amazon brands that you might recommend. Thanks in advance. Huge fan of your functional medicine podcast. I'm hoping to have a future career in functional medicine as well. All right. Well, what I'd recommend is this. I have uh, a whole category just on how to overcome any digestive uh, issue that you could deal with. <clears throat> That's at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You're going to want to scroll through the top and click on the digestive one. And if you want to go really deep with Zoe, which I, you know, I recommend since this is obviously a passion of yours, go to stephencabral.com forward slash courses. One of the courses I have is on rebalancing the digestive system, because although um, I like where your mind's at, I appreciate your dedication to helping others. We don't want to look just towards di digestive enzymes for IBD. The question is always, why do you have IBD in the first place? And it's not necessarily a lack of digestive enzymes. The question with IBD is, do you have candida overgrowth? Do you have bacterial overgrowth? Do you have parasites? Do you have H. pylori? Do you have uh, food sensitivities? Do you have weak stomach acid? Do you have a higher hernia? I mean, like you're looking at all of these things and you're assessing as to why. Digestive enzymes aren't bad. I mean, we use digestive enzymes all the time. My dead wife and I use digestive enzymes. I use proteolytic enzymes in the morning. And um, my wife uses a lot more digestive enzymes with her meals. It helps her uh, digestion. She's healthy. Everything's good, but it can help with aid in digestion. So for all of the digestive enzymes and other products I recommend, you just go to stephencabral.com forward slash shop. But remember, although I recommend those, I do want to make sure that you're looking at the underlying root causes because if you have IBD, we need to figure out what the root cause is, all right? Thank you for writing it. Jen is up next. Hey, Dr. Wall, thank you for everything you do and for creating a truly help, helpful and transparent health and wellness community. My question is more of a career-oriented one. I'm graduating this upcoming summer and would like to pursue a career in research. I want to work for a place that conducts tin ducks, ethical and objective studies, and was wondering if you had any insight into places with these values. I was thinking labs and universities around the area would be my best bet. I know you may not be able to answer this question, but any information you can provide would be helpful in my job search. Thanks so much. Yeah, happy to help with this. So my favorite way to look for which research institution to work for would be to learn more about the people that are representing those labs. So like, let me give you an example. Uh, Dr. David Sinclair, right down the road in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts at MIT and Harvard, uh, both in Cambridge, Massachusetts, literally right over the Charles River. They oversee the lab and they're in the lab, so it's not like they're not, but there's typically then like a head coordinator, manager, director of the specific studies that might be going on and, and overseeing that. So what I like to do is always understand like a, a top-down approach. So like you want to you want to be interested in, intrigued by the 
person and where they're going, like their movement, their idea, their vision, and then also in the type of work that they do. So you're right, like I can't answer your question specifically because let's say my interest right now is in um, life extension as well as help span extension. I'll be talking more about that in my HPH programs coming up. But um, yeah, like that's, so that's my interest. So who would I be interested in studying with? Like, okay, like, um, I would go look at Dr. Sinclair or Dr. Nier or a few others into their work and into what they're doing. And then I would then apply uh, or look at those universities and see if there's any internship work or job placement. So hopefully that's, that's helpful, all right? Simone is up next. Hi, Dr. Rall. What are your thoughts on the at-home microcurrent facial devices? They allegedly improve and build the facial, mu facial muscles, lift and tighten the skin, as well as smooth the lines. Do you think this is true? And do you feel that these results are long-lasting? Thanks so much in advance for your answer. Okay. Yeah, happy to help with this um, as well. So, uh, yes, they do work, and but, but not the end-all, be-all. So let me explain. So... These are basically smaller versions of something called a trans -cut <laughs> Let me see if I can remember this one. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation device, a TENS unit. I actually just talked about it, was it like two days ago on the Friday review? I can't even remember anymore. <laughs> I didn't do a lot of shows. But TENS units help with stimulating muscles. They bring blood flow to the area and it's basically like working a muscle and that's what it does. So what they can do is this, they can stimulate a muscle and if it's gotten weak, it can absolutely make it a little bit stronger. And that includes the facial muscles as well. But, and so yes, they work, but again, not the end all be all. Why do I say that? Because if there's a lack of co collagen, you're not getting enough protein in your diet, you're not getting enough vitamin C, you're not getting enough zinc, you're not getting enough total nutrients, micronutrients, you can't rebuild the area, you can't rebuild the tissue. So what I would recommend is maybe something like, um, again, the daily foundational protocol, I'm a huge believer in, the advanced collagen support by Equalife, I'm a huge believer in, it works, it's guaranteed to work. And then what I would say is this, uh, you also, in my opinion, should do microneedling as well. Microneedling is going to damage micro, so small damage to the cartilage, and not the cartilage, but the collagen, helps it rebuild. Then if you have the nutrients, it will rebuild. And then uh, the microcurrent can be helpful as well. I wouldn't do the microcurrent every day, I don't think, um, but certainly like three, four times a week, I think that um, you'd be able to do that. It just depends. If you're doing a longer session, you need less times per week. If you're doing little sessions, you do it a little bit more often, kind of like weightlifting, right? So hopefully that was helpful. All right, AW is up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. Thank you for the work you do. I really appreciate your insights, and I'm hoping you can help me. I suffer from PMDD. It's hard to describe the severity of the symptoms I experience every month, especially on the mental side. Bone crushing sadness with weeping spells, hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness and overwhelm. I relive all of my worst regrets, extreme sensitivity, erratic thoughts, heightened anxiety, and jumpiness, inability to concentrate, I, keep, I could keep going. Suffice to say it disrupts my life and has damaged relationships. Do you have any insights into this condition? I'm also wondering your, your ideas or thoughts on the supplement jubilance. Thank you. Okay, yeah, happy to help with this. Um, PDD, PMDD for people out there that don't know what that stands for, it's premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And it is PMS symptoms, which typically occur the last seven to 14 days of your cycle, typically seven days to 10 days. And um, rather than being called PMS, it's called severe PMS or PMDD, but it's, it's heightened symptoms of the mental, emotional, depression, low mood, OCD, and then it's also an irritability, overwhelm, uh, but then it's also sometimes the physical side, cramps, bloating, uh, pain, abdominal pain, et cetera. And, and this is a real thing. And typically, um, so what we see is this is often due to a few things. One of them is estrogen dominance. So that means lower levels of progesterone versus normal or higher levels of estrogen. Uh, another one, and this is important to look at as well, elevated levels of cortisol, and then imbalanced neurotransmitters, which almost nobody talks about. So insufficient levels of 5-HTP or serotonin, insufficient levels of GABA, and maybe even heightened levels of glutamate, 
and heightened levels of histamine. So hopefully you checked out my podcast on how histamine increases estrogen, not a good thing when you're suffering from uh, PMDD, uh, but also the neurotransmitter balances. So for you, I would recommend the big five labs if you're able to run that because higher levels of omega-6s are gonna exacerbate this as well. So again, my highest recommendation is the big five labs and if you're able to, cost-wise, because I know there's a cost to this, so don't get me wrong, um, I would add on the neurotransmitter test as well. You want to run all of these during your highest level of severities, probably somewhere around days 19, 20, or 21 of your cycle. That's when we recommend running that stress mood metabolism test, uh, as well as the neurotransmitter if you're feeling those symptoms then. If you can only run two labs, run the stress mood metabolism and the neurotransmitter, uh, but then you'll, you'll absolutely want to be doing then the daily foundational protocol because you'll just have to assume you have imbalanced levels of omega-6s, omega-3s, missing levels of B vitamin, zinc, et cetera. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we work with this all the time. We're happy to help. You can also work with an integrative health practitioner, uh, level two, and uh, when level three comes out, level three for sure. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, you know, I know that you can overcome this or the goal is this, the goal is it's at hundred percent right now to take it down to 70% within like six to eight weeks, uh, maybe 12, and then get it down to like 30, 40% in another you know month or two after that, right? Cause you're getting better, better every cycle. And then the goal is like, oh, well it only happens like uh, to, to a vet, much less severe extent one or two days, and then you don't have it anymore. That's always the goal, and that's how we see it work in our practice. Okay, let's get in another question. This one is from Lisa. Lisa says, oh, and by the way, I don't know the supplement uh, that you were talking about. Um, we, I don't know that. Uh, we base everything on your lab testing, so we recommend the lab testing. That's that's really, I mean, for something very severe, I, I, I can't recommend just trying certain things. It's not bad to do that. I'm not saying it's bad, but um, yeah, that's not, not my highest recommendation. And I also have a really great course in this as well. If you want to check that out at stephencabal.com forward slash courses, it's the rebalancing female hormones one. All right, Lisa's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I hope you're doing wonderful. Well, I hope you're doing wonderful as well, Lisa. I appreciate that. I am. I have a question about supplements and fasting. I always eat an early dinner around 5 p.m. at the latest, and I fast for about 16 hours. I've noticed that I wake up at 4 a.m. every night, and I feel it's due to low blood sugar. The best solution would be to eat something before bed, but I don't want to break my fast, which I mainly do for my gut health and autophagy. Are there any ways to keep my blood sugar stable throughout the night without breaking the fast? With certain supplements that do not affect the fast, Thanks so much in advance for your answer. You are amazing, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa, you're amazing, appreciate that. All right, so let's dive into it. So basically, you're waking up at 4 a.m., which you believe is to hypoglycemia. So when your blood sugar levels drop, your body then says, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. We need to bring up sugar so that we don't pass out. Even though you're asleep, you go into a coma. If your blood sugar gets too low, so we don't want that. So your body has its protective mechanisms. So your body produces a glucocorticoids, namely cortisol. Cortisol helps to break down stored liver glycogen or muscle glycogen as needed and uh, raise blood sugar levels, but oftentimes the rise in cortisol then drops your melatonin and lo and behold, you wake up and you have a difficult time going back to sleep. Okay, so um, understood where you're coming from and totally get it. So uh, yes, the, the options are this little protein snack before bed, that seems to help more, most people, or sometimes just a handful of nuts. But yes, it does break your fast. Okay, so you wanna do a fast, which means you can't eat. Totally get it. So what we do is this. At dinner time, we are using a product called, well, it's, it's basically this. It's the entire ultimate sleep protocol, ultimate sleep health protocol. But let me, let me narrow it down because maybe you don't need all of them. The, you can even start with this, you can do this. You can do balanced zinc and three capsules of full spectrum magnesium at dinner. Now, the reason that works as a supplement is that magnesium helps to control the adrenals, well, through the sympathetic nervous system, and blood sugar levels. And zinc helps with balancing the nervous system and tissue repair as well. So it's like magnesium and zinc at dinner really help to calm that sympathetic nervous system. I've been doing magnesium and zinc at dinner for, yeah, like, almost 20 years. It's a game changer for my sleep. Like it's one of the best things I can do for my sleep is every night at dinner, magnesium and zinc. And I've just reduced my dosage over the years. So I just need less. 
Um, the other thing that you may want to look into is the liquid melatonin. Um, all of these things are available at stephencabral.com forward slash shop. Again, you can always use your favorite functional medicine brand. I'm always okay with that, of course. But if you want to know what I do in my practice, I just like to share that with you. That's all. Okay. And the last product, but you don't need to even use this right away. Try the others first, would be Adrenal Soothe. You need to do two to three capsules at dinner. And it just kind of calms, again, that, that sympathetic nervous system. So there's no kind of like highs and lows and spikes in cortisol. Um, that's what I'd recommend. But of course, you could run the stress mood and metabolism test and actually see if there's any um, misregulation or dysregulation of cortisol in the evening. Again, that's at stephencabal.com forward slash labs. And it's called the stress mood and metabolism. All right. So hopefully that works great. Uh, and again, we'll, uh, you can write back in and let us know. Okay. And then at dinner, just make sure you get enough protein, right? Protein and fiber at dinner so that you don't get the highs after dinner and then the low during the night. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's do one more question. This one is from Jason. It says, I use oil of ole on my face Every day after I get out of the shower, is there a better, safer alternative? My skin tends to be dry, and I also like the fact to provide some sun protection of SPF. Okay, so um, Jason, I have lots of shows on skin care. My, I don't typically recommend a product like Oil of Olay. If you like an oil product, I typically recommend an argan oil or rose hip oil, which have nice vitamin C and antioxidants. They also don't clog the pores. So those are really nice. Argan oil is a really easy one. Um, and also, depending on your age and if you see like your skin starting to age, there's a great product as well it is called uh, One Skin. And it's a moisturizer that also has been clinically proven to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. I don't know if we still have a code for that. The code used to be Cabral15, I think, for 15% off. I think it was. You'll find it at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. And then I just want to, um, I just want to, you to look into the SPF. I'd be careful using an F SPF if it's not a natural organic uh, kind. And the reason is that many SPFs have been shown to be carcinogenic, which means causing cancer. So I understand why you're using it. I just want to make sure that you're not putting a toxic based product on your skin. If you, you want to check to see if it's toxic or not, go to skindeep.org or ewg.org, type in the product name and see where it ranks on the um, environmental working group toxicity list. And then you can decide if it's the right one for you because it's not my job to tell you if you're, it's the right thing or not. It's just my job to point you in the right direction, give you the place to start, and then hopefully uh, you make the right decision for you and your family as well. So hopefully today's show has been helpful. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in on the weekend edition of the show. I thank you. I appreciate you. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new week of the Cabral Concept. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.